After speaking with literally thousands of investors over the last five years, we get asked a really, really consistent question and that is what makes an incredible property or what helps you get above average returns long term? Now in this video, we're gonna explain not just how to find a great market or a great suburb, but the right type of property as well. So one of these terms, one of these things that keeps getting thrown around is I want to buy an investment grade property. Can you find me an investment grade property? So what would you actually describe as an investment grade property? You know, I think for me, the number one thing is quality. Now mm. quality comes in a heap of different forms. It can come to the historical averages. It can come down to buying the right market at the right time, the right capital city. It can also mean buying the right type of product, like the right home versus a unit, for example. And then at a granular level, reducing it to the right street, the right part in the suburb. So if I wanna buy an investment grade property, where should I be looking? Where should I be focusing? You know, one of the best pieces of information that you and I have ever read was something by CoreLogic where they looked at 20 years worth of data. And what they did is they looked at the seven largest capital cities or metro markets in Australia and compared them to the seven largest regionals. So we're talking Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, Perth, etc., versus like Geelong, Wollongong, Sunny Coast, Gold Coast. And what they found, which completely blew my mind and has completely changed my idea around investment grade, is the metro markets outperform the regionals by over 85%. Now, that is huge money that as an investor, I don't wanna leave on the table. No way. So narrowing it down from like a longer term perspective, looking at those metro markets, but then what, you sh what should you be buying or what would you be buying in those metro markets? You know, I don't always get it right. In <laughs> fact, I've got it wrong way more times than I've got it right in my own port portfolio. But for me, I'm really looking at the fundamentals again now. When I looked at the data from CoreLogic over 25 years, I found that houses had outperformed units by over 96%. Now, I'm not sure what the difference between like a house and a townhouse is, for example, but that immediately pivoted my strategy as well. And, you know, just became very, very clear that houses were my future because as we both know, the power is absolutely in the land. Mm -hmm. Now these metro markets are huge and there's lots of houses in all of them as well. So how do you refine that down to identify an investment grade suburb? Man, I keep touching your knee and you're so hot. <laughs> so hot right now. <laughs> I'm burning up over here right now. I am like, whoop, sweating up, but I Try love that it. that towel in, baby. Now for me, um, this is my favorite part. Like as a highly analytical data dude, this is where I start to like really get my rocks off. Hell so. Yeah. You know, when I start to look at a suburb, I'm looking at infrastructure, I'm looking at proximity to the CBD, I'm looking at train stations, school districts, hospitals, access to high quality jobs. And then even more than that, I'm starting to look at different pockets of cities and going, well, where do the wealthy people live? And mm. where are the higher quality school districts that those wealthy people are gonna put their kids into? And demographically speaking, like where's the demand? Where mm. are the higher average household incomes, where are the lower vacancy rates? And I collect all of these different data points which we share with our clients and then each of them tells a story and you use, you know, a hundred of those like micro things relating to a better suburb which helps you get ultimately a better outcome long term. Love that. So now once you've identified the right market, you've identified that you want to buy a house, you've identified a great quality suburb that ticks all of those fundamentals, but now you're in the suburb, you've got to make sure that you're buying in the right street, which I think a lot of people don't put as much weight <laughs> on this. So like, how do you actually find the right street as well? You know, when I first got started, I was kind of thinking that the cheapest street and the cheapest property in the suburb was the best one. Buying <laughs> below the median house price. I was always looking to get that little deal and make 10 or 20 grand on the way in. But you know, that cost me on properties on the central coast in Sydney, literally hundreds of thousands of dollars in the last 10 years. So what I do now is I look at the fundamentals around, is there any housing commission first mm. and foremost, any bushfire issues, landslide issues, flooding related issues. And then once I've ticked those like high level boxes, I really get to the emotional place, which is, would I live on this street? Would I raise my family with my income in this particular area? And if you can do a drive-by, even better. Like, you know, mm. how many people in the street 
have more than a couple of cars on the on the front lawn is a good indicator of what's going on in the street. Yeah. How well the grass is maintained, like you're just commenting on my grass, which is absolutely oh, mint right it. now because it's been raining for the last week and it's like people that own their own home generally care a bit more and you want to be in a street where there's a higher percentage of owner occupiers. Man, I went to an inspection once and I was looking through this property and across the road, two guys were playing with a shotgun and I'm like, <laughs> okay, I do not want to buy on this street. And then like literally the next property that I inspected, there was really, it was a wide street. There was beautiful trees. So it was nice and shaded. There was not a single car that drove by. And I was like, this is the kind of street that I want to buy on, right? So it's just like having that logical think about it, like, would I actually live on this street? Would I be okay with my kids playing out here? hundred percent. And then like on top of that, like around the grass stuff, it's like how many places have been recently renovated? How many people are taking pride in cleaning things up or have any of the places been knocked down and rebuilt? And I think they're some really good indicators. And then more from a Google Maps perspective, like how far are they away from schools, shopping centers, train stations and employment, as well as what Michael Matusik says, which is that livability factor mm. in terms of like what lifestyle options are available, which has become so important during COVID for people. Now, the last thing getting to an investment grade property is the property itself, right? Mm. So what makes an investment grade property? You know, really simple. These are like just ones and zeros. Yep. At least a five to 600 square meter piece of land, if you can get that, a nice big home. Now, this is one of the mistakes I made as well. Like buying cheaper homes, I bought smaller homes. Mm. But the Australian dream for many people, now that the number of children per household is increasing again, is much more like that three to four better two bathroom type joint. I like when the kitchen, dining and alfresco all flow into each other. Nice big backyard for a family or maybe a pool and a dog later on. You know, unique little working spaces now with so many people in Oz working from home can be super important as well. But they're the fundamentals. And then just good bones, like mm. nice big bedrooms, nice big bathrooms and some potential. Like, you know, if you want that set and forget property, that's completely cool. But in a lot of the places that we buy as well, like in 10 years, people can repaint, re-carpet, sort of do what you've just done with your mm. home and exponentially increase the value and the rent return on that as well. I think that's gonna be a reality for most investors anyway, because what I'm hearing here is a lot of long-term stuff as well. So mm. it's likely that you're gonna to have to put a lick of paint down, maybe upgrade the flooring, but you can always, you know, renovate a home, knock down, rebuild and things like that. So I like that you've kind of talked a bit more of the big rocks first, like the market, the street, the type of property, things like that. And then you come down to the house level. 100% bro, like there's an incredibly large amount of history in the market if people just subscribe to the likes of your core logics, your SQMs, your Heron Todd Whites, and you can really get your head around it and get a criteria for what makes a high quality investment grade property. Love that man. I need to get out of the sun before I start cooking over here. <laughs> sweaty, so sweaty. Oh, that's good.